All right, what I want to do is just kind of go through and help you a little bit with uh, the two problems that we have today and maybe get you started on the back of this worksheet, which is extra credit. Um, let's go ahead and look at uh, number one. Both of these are uh, transition matrices. And so remember, when, a, when we have a transition matrix, we set it up from one year or uh, one situation to another. And so in this particular instance, in number one, we are talking about from one election to another election. And uh, we have uh, three uh, political parties here. Um, we have uh, the Republican Party, we have the Democratic Party, and we have the Libertarian Party. And so I'm going to have uh, a three by three matrix that looks something like this, and I'm going to go from the Republican Party and see how many will vote Republican in the following election, what percentage of the people typically go to the Democratic Party, and then the Libertarian Party. Um, so it kind of has something to do with uh, how many people are most loyal to their political party. It says, in a, a state of three political parties in one election, 50% vote Republican. 30% uh, vote Democrat and 20% vote Libertarian. That is really what's going on right now. So we have Republican and then we have Democratic and then we have Libertarian and 50% vote Republican and 30% vote Democratic and then 20% vote Libertarian. But then it says from one election to the next, 50% of the of the people who vote Republican still vote Republican. So what I'm going to do is let a decimal represent that. From Republican Party to the Republican Party is 50%. And then of those uh, Republicans that vote in one election, it says that 50% vote Republican, 30% change and vote Democratic, and 20% change and go to the Libertarian Party. This is kind of how we're setting this up. I'm going to stop here uh, so that you can finish the rest. Remember, we would multiply these two matrices together to get what's going on in one year. But the question asks, it says find the, um, the, the transition matrix, the initial uh, population distribution matrix, and then the population distribution after one election, two elections, and five elections, and then the equilibrium distribution population. So if this first is A times B, to get in one year, then you're going to have to talk about, or remember what we did in class to get what would happen in two years. Um, so anyway, that's as far as I'm going to go with this one. Uh, the second problem is a little bit more involved, though, even though it looks a little shorter. You have a dairy farmer who knows that 55% of his herd is dominant. Again, we're going to set it up the same way. Um, there's uh, dominant. 55% uh, of his herd is dominant, uh, and then hybrid, and then 10% is recessive. Um, so the um, initial population uh, we can set up as uh, something like this, 55%, 35%, and then 10%. But then to get the transition matrix is a little bit more difficult. It says his prize winning bull is hybrid for this particular trait, and it says find the proportion of his herd that will be dominant, hybrid, and recessive in the next five generations. So we are going to set it up like this, dominant, hybrid, and recessive, dominant, hybrid, and recessive. And it says the prize winning bull is hybrid. Now what hybrid means is that um, if this is the bull here, and this is let's say the cow here, <laughs> um, if the bull is hybrid, that means it has one dominant gene and then one recessive gene. I'm going to go, um, we'll just use big D, little d. Um, and then the cow, uh, let's say that um, it says his, pr okay, so let's say that he mates with a dominant cow. Um, that's big D, big D. Well, then all of the offspring from this cow will look like this. Um, we have big D, big D, big D, big D, big D, little d, and big D, little d. This is a um, Punnett square here. And so from a dominant cow, if we go back up here, from a dominant cow, um, 
it will mate with a bull, and all the cows mate with the same bull. Uh, you might think that's funny, but that's what happens here. <laughs> um, from a dominant cow, 50% of the offspring are dominant. And then 50% are hybrid, and you do not get any recessive cows. Well, that's one-third of what we need to do here. The other third of what we need to do, the cow is always going to be the same, or the bull is always going to be the same. But then it could mate with another hybrid cow, uh, which would be big D, little d. It could also mate with a recessive cow. A recessive cow is going to be little d, little d. And so you're going to have to figure out what the proportions are for um, this type of situation. Um, and put those in here as well, and that will help you set up number two. Um, and again, remember, you're supposed to find, uh, the, find the proportion of his herd that will be dominant, hybrid, and recessive in the next five generations. So this will be the first generation here, but then you're going to have to do it again to figure out what the second generation, third generation, fourth, and fifth generations would be. So, and you can use your calculators for this, which will help quite a bit. Um, and then if you finish that, then the question on the back uh, is an interesting question. I'll give you a hint, though. Uh, the matrix is not going to be a the it's not going to be a three by three matrix. Uh, it's probably going to look more like a five by five matrix. Um, but anyway, if you can do that, that'll be extra credit for tomorrow. Um, you can work on a partner with this with these problems. Uh, good luck. I hope you think it's fun because I do. <laughs> we'll talk to you. Uh, we'll talk to you when I get back to class.